Well, hello everybody and welcome to the Adobe XD Daily Creative Challenge. I'm your host, Jesse Showalter. We're gonna be here for the next two weeks uh, joining me for this awesome uh, daily challenge. So it's gonna be half an hour each day. We're gonna be jumping into Adobe XD, learning some UI UX design skills and building some really cool stuff. We've got people jumping into the chat. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, come on over to Behance so you can chat with me there because we got Jennifer Poole, Rosie Way, Caitlin and Sam Peterson in the chat already. Would love to have you here as well. Uh, I'm going to jump over to my screen so you can see how to get started with the XD Daily Creative Challenge. You can go ahead and uh, go to behance.net slash challenge slash XD. You get all the information that you need there. Download your files, uh, join the uh, Discord server where you can submit your work. And uh, we have nine challenges and we have next Monday off. So we're gonna jump right into a challenge today. If you're new to XD, download this starting file and let's get going. Let's start doing some design work together. Hey to Chris Olson, hello to Mitchell and everybody jumping into the chat. Hello to all of you. We have nine amazing challenges. This is challenge one. And uh, let's talk about what we're gonna be doing here. We're gonna be designing a hobby or an activity finder. Uh, and we're gonna allow users to filter and find activities that interest them. We're gonna be exploring repeat grid, auto animate, a lot of the basic features of XD today. So it's a great stream to kick off with if maybe you've never used XD. Uh, maybe you are just starting out using XD or maybe you're an expert. We might have some tricks in here for you as well. If you scroll down this file, this is how every starting file will be. We will have some inspiration on what we're building today. And then there's also an opportunity for you to flip through some different resources. So uh, by coming over here to the component instance menu, we can go over and see where to maybe get some icons, maybe where to download some fonts, some photos, and a place to find some tutorials as well. So there's just, those are some resources, some tips. And again, make sure you sign up for Discord and uh, post your work on Behance after. In my starting file, I have a uh, mobile artboard and it's gonna be a mobile experience today. And I've already done a little bit of the work to kind of fast forward us. Uh, so open up your XD file, let's get going. Looking forward to it. We uh, Again, we're gonna be doing a little bit of filtering. And if we look at our examples, we like some of these filtering bubbles. We wanna create some of those, but we also want to possibly kind of create a similar experience like we have here. So maybe we'll do some horizontal scroll. We'll be able to tap uh, from one instance to another. And then we'll also be able to watch them actually animate and sort on the screen, which will be really, really fun. So you can see we have just the basics set up. We have a little bit of navigation at the top and an avatar, um, and we have some typography here. We are using Open Sans for uh, our font choice today just created a little typographic hierarchy and we have a starting bubble. So this is the type of bubble we're going to be using for all of our little tags or our categories. And we're going to put those together in a component here in a second. Down below, we have uh, some cards and I'm, I'm thinking it'd be kind of fun to do a little bit of a masonry grid. If you don't know what that is, it's kind of, uh, um, um, not all uniform sizes as far as the, the height of them. And we're gonna kind of plug them in like bricks, like a mason putting bricks into the wall. And down at the bottom, we have a bottom anchored navigation. I've already turned this into a component and it's there for us to use. So let's start digging in. What's one of the first things we wanna do? Let's work with this bubble, shall we? So I'm gonna come in, you can see to this top section and I have uh, the word all and I have my little background shape. Why don't we grab both of those and why don't we just hit Command or Control K and create a component out of it. By doing that, we now have our master component. You can always tell what a master component is because it'll have this little filled in green diamond in the top left hand corner. And that's gonna be different from if I dragged an instance of this out and I had a white empty diamond in the top left hand corner. Um, so here you have the master and here you have the instance. You can also come over to our library panel here, our document assets panel, and you can see all of the different elements that or assets that will be created um, throughout our project. So we can drag them in there as well. With that being said though, why don't we call this one, let's come over to our assets. Um, let's, let's see, delete, let's, undo what we just did. Let's delete this original one and let's rename this one. Let's call this tag, something like that. I might've already had one in there for you when you got started, not sure. So we have this new tag and uh, why don't we add 
actually some padding to this. That's going to help us because um, if I was to start typing inside of this, see how the text runs outside? Uh, then we'd have to come in and manually update the size. We want this to be a very extendable, very scalable component. That's the key to good product design or UI design is creating things that are scalable, right? That work in lots of different scenarios. Uh, XD makes that really simple for us. We're going to select our component, our tag. And then why don't we come over here to padding, turn on padding. And you can see we have 10 pixels on the top. 26 on the right, 10 on the bottom, 26 on the left. And now if we type inside of here, it's actually gonna stretch our component out uh, to match. It's gonna keep that consistent padding around the edges. That's great, that's exactly what we want. Um, and now we're gonna do one more really cool thing. We need a selected and a deselected state for our component. So we're gonna come up to component main up here and we're gonna create a new component state. Let's click on the plus. We have a couple options here. We have a new state, we have a hover state, and we have a toggle state. You can create a hover and toggle state by clicking here. But uh, if we see our little prototype symbol at the right, that just means if we click on that, it's going to do all that work for us. But why don't we, we'll talk about that a little bit more later in some other challenges. Let's click new state and we'll just type the word active here, right? So we're gonna have a default state and then we're gonna have an active state. With active state selected in my instance menu up here, or excuse me, my, my, my state menu up here, I'm going to do a little bit of editing. So I'm going to fill this with our dark purple and I'm gonna change my text to white using my color picker down here. And um, I think that works. That could be a fun active state just like that. Actually, why don't we also change the border to our dark color. So we're fully, we're fully active there. Everything has been activated. So now we can flip back between default state and active state. And we can also drag out some new instances of this. And let's put some types of activities or categories of activities in here. Something like uh, maybe things that are outdoors. Okay, that's one. So why don't we space this? Let's do another one here. Uh, let's call this one, I don't know, like food and drink that's a, that could i like i like to go out and explore some food what's your favorite type of food tell me that in the chat that could be a good conversation all right so here we go uh yeah and then we're gonna keep going actually we're gonna extend this off the screen to get a little bit of horizontal scroll action so let's do maybe two more shall we let's do something like sports um and we'll put that with our tag selected about 10 pixels away. See how we get some smart padding in Adobe XD? It's really, really smart. Helps us a lot. Helps us to work smarter and not harder. Now you'll notice something. All my tags are stacking up here and that's good. We want that. But if I was to do another tag and drag it out here, it's there. It, it's there. It's staying there. The only reason it's staying, and when I mean staying, is when I click off of my element it hasn't just dropped off the artboard onto the canvas. The reason is because it's part of a group. So as long as that group is on the artboard, we can extend things off of the canvas or off the artboard to drip over onto the canvas and it doesn't remove itself from our artboard, which is a nice little thing. So let's do one more, I don't know, maybe like, um, you know, uh, dates. Like maybe, maybe me and my wife wanna go on a date. That would be a good category for us. We're gonna use a couple of these categories today. Uh, with that being said, I think we want to create that horizontal scroll effect now. So I'm going to grab all of our tags in my layers panel. See, I have five of my tags and then I am going to, with those selected, I'm going to come over to my panel on the right hand side and I'm just going to select, these are all the different ways we can do scroll groups. We can do horizontal, we can do vertical, and we can do horizontal and vertical, which is really cool for maps and different interactive elements, but we're gonna pick horizontal for now. So it gives us a little example of what that could look like, but let's go ahead and hit that. And when we do that, we get these fun little pull tabs, these bars at the left and right hand edge that kind of tell us uh, that this is the area that the content can scroll in. We want this to be able to scroll all the way to the left hand side and see how it cuts it off if I drag this in and all the way to the right hand side. And then we have some elements extending off of the page. This is really, really cool because now we can select our artboard, we can press play, and we can actually drag our elements over. And we didn't have to create like a separate artboard for this where we showed some sort of prototyping gesture. We just did that right there with our horizontal scroll group. So scroll groups, really, really powerful. Let's just do one more. I'll just duplicate one more of these just to really get that good scroll effect in there. We want to see it scroll 
nice and far, right? Okay, cool. Uh, why don't we re rename it? Because we have two date categories now. How about uh, families? Something like that. That could be fun. So maybe you want to take my kids to the park. Okay, so now we have all, we should probably, a good experience for the user would be to start them out with one of them selected. So we definitely want to have the all be our active state, okay? So far, so good. And now we can scroll here, scroll here, pretty nice. Really, really cool stuff. What's really nice is uh, that later on, we'll create some other artboards to show the animation happening. And all we have to do is change the instance and it'll, it'll just, to turn one on and turn the other off, which would be really, really fun. Um, somebody says, my favorite food that is chapati, a starter pack here in Nairobi. Very cool. I don't know what that is. I'm going to have to look that up and try it. Caitlin says, I could eat pasta 100% of every day of my life. I would agree. Uh, I could eat pizza uh, every single day of my life. All right. So let's keep going. Somebody said fried chicken. Oh, love that. I live in Texas. Uh, and so fried foods or a plus out here. Okay, now we have these cards, and I gave you some starting cards. Uh, these little elements here would be a great place for you to go out and find some illustrations and drop some illustrations on each one of these. Now, what's really cool is we have, you can see in our layers panel, let's tuck some of these things away. We have card one and card two. What we could do is actually select card one. It's all contained within our group of cards, but we could select card one, and we could, if we wanted to, press repeat grid and that's going to create the little repeat grid uh, dotted line around our element and any way that we drag one of these green handles we can create horizontal repeat or vertical repeating we could do that and really quickly prototype out a bunch of our cards which would be really really nice now what's really great about repeat grid is i can grab the kind of gutter space in between and when I'm doing that, it's going to be resizing all of my cards. This is again, working smarter, not harder. If you haven't used repeat grids, super duper fun. But what you can also do is that first element that's there, if you move that, you're gonna move everything in the repeat grid. So this might be a workflow that you want. You wanna just change something at one place, not everywhere. But what's also really cool is you can customize the almost like instances of the other cards that's not the master inside of your repeat grid. So for instance, I can write something different here without changing everything. Or if I change dog parks to cat parks, right? It doesn't change the text there as well. It's only gonna change things like size or maybe even color inside of our repeat grid, but you're able to customize the individual elements if it's text, especially text. Now you may not wanna use repeat grid if we want something like really customized size here because it's gonna change everything in the repeat grid. So you decide whether or not you wanna use repeat grid. You can always, after you've created your repeat grid, you can always right click on it and ungroup from the grid. And now you have individual elements that you can fully customize without any constraints. So that's up to you. You choose when to use it and when to not use it. I'm gonna delete those because like a cooking show from the 90s, I'm gonna put the turkey in and take the turkey out. I actually have some cards with some illustrations that I was not allowed to give you guys, <laughs> but uh, I thought that they would be great for this episode. So find some illustrations that you really like, and when you submit your work on Discord in the Adobe XD uh, Discord server, then tomorrow we'll be able to look at your designs and I'll be able to give you feedback and review, which could be really, really fun. So now that we have our cards that are all Mason read out and filled in, um, that works perfectly. I'm just lining things up. I'm going to hit command and I'm going to hit the um, um, apostrophe key, excuse me, semicolon key. And that's going to bring up my little smart rulers that I have on the side. Uh, and I got those smart rulers by making sure that they're on, dragging or excuse me, hovering over the left or the top side of each individual artboard. And you can drag new smart rulers into place, which is really, really nice. And again, you just turn those on and off really quickly. Uh, I use that key command quite a bit. I also use the command uh, apostrophe key um, to turn on my grids and my columns and all that kind of stuff. So that's a good one to remember. Now, now you can see it in my cards layer, I have all of my cards and they're named card one through card eight, which is really, really nice. I'll be able to animate these around really, really easily. So let's say this artboard is called activities all. Why don't we create an active, ooh, excuse me, la thing we have to do before we go is let's take our navigation, drag that to the top so it's always there. It's staying in place as we scroll, okay? 
That's definitely something we want to do. And really quickly, we're going to want to take all of these cards and put these in a vertical scroll group. And because our nav is in front, we could bring this all the way down to the bottom and we can make this thing, um, the top edge, actually just move this a little bit because we have, I don't know if you knew, but we have a shape actually as the background to this top card. Now we should make sure that our, our top is above in our layer stack. That way when these cards scroll up, they scroll behind our navigation. That was a little confusing the way that I described that. Woo, this is day one. We're gonna fix it up, I promise. But now when we select our artboard and press play, we're able to horizontally scroll these and then vertically scroll these up and down, um, which is pretty fun, pretty nice. Okay, with that being said, our first artboard is all set. The design is ready to go. All we have to do now is create the other artboards and then prototype back and forth and choose how we want to move elements around. So why don't we duplicate this artboard? I'm going to call this activities. Let's do outdoors. And so we're going to filter some of our selections down. We don't want to show everything. We want to show not all. So we're going to select all, change the state, select outdoors, change this to active. Now you do have to recursively go in or manually go in and change uh, the text that's on each one of these. So out doors, and that'll just pop that right back into place. Perfect. So we'll be able to move back and forth between those. Now, which of these elements is outdoors? Coffee could be outdoors, but probably not. I like to drink my coffee inside. So what we'll do is just bring the opacity of that down. And then ice cream also, why don't we move it up? We'll get a little motion bring it down. Roller skating, definitely outside, right? Okay, so let's move roller skating up and pop it up just like that. Um, and then let's see, let's see, let's see. Almost there. What's this next one? Dancing? Yeah, you could dance outside, I think. Let's bring that one up. Swimming? Absolutely, swimming is outdoors. Um, and do we have any other cards? We do have some cards down below, like reading and yoga. Let's just say that those are not outside and we will bring them up and then bring the opacity down. So we have a little bit of things moving around, okay? All we have to do now is come into Activities All. Let's go to our Prototype tab in the top left-hand corner. We're currently in the Design Mode. Let's go over to the Prototype area and we're gonna select that Outdoors tag at the top and let's drag it over to our other artboards, give ourselves a little bit of space. And then in this one, we will select all and we'll go, well, before we do that, let's, let's head back. I'm gonna select this prototype that we're working on right now. I'm gonna tap the line and now we can change the trigger and all of our prototyping um, details that are inside. So we wanna say on tap, okay, so on tap. We wanna transition, now nah, let's go straight to auto animate. Transitions are just basic movements, swiping, pushing, left, right, up, down. We wanna do something a little bit more spicy today. So let's go auto animate. We're gonna go to our outdoors. Why don't we do something like ease in? Actually, why don't we do something like a snap? That could be fun. And we'll change the duration of this animation to maybe something like 0.6 seconds, a little bit over half of a second. That could be great. Um, and then that looks good with those options selected. Now when we prototype back to all, what we're gonna get is the similar selection. So we can see tap, auto animate, snap, 0.6 seconds. It's going to mimic that. So we keep some consistency. That's something we should be thinking about when we're designing our products is consistent interactions, consistent animations, all that jazz. So let's try it out. Let's see if this works. Uh, we should be able to press, you can see our little prototype lines that are there. Let's press play and see if this thing works. We should be able to kind of scroll up and down here, left and right. And when I hover over in my prototype, you can see that it's giving me a little kind of like hand clickable area. I click and we see some prototyping happening, some animating that's happening. Super fun. Now what's really cool is because we used uh, our, our uh, scroll groups, it doesn't matter where we're at in our scroll group, it's gonna keep that exactly where it's at. It's not gonna like reset it, which, which would happen if we were doing that without our scroll group. So we were able to scroll all the way around and not lose the scrolled position. It stay, it remembers it throughout, right? Which is pretty fun. Okay, let's do another one. Uh, let's bring activities all over. I'm going to go back to my design interface here. Let's go activities and we'll call this one food and drink. Well, we'll just do activities food. 
And we're going to do a similar thing here. We're going to come in and take our all back to our, at, our default state and active. This is going to say food and drink. So let's make sure we type in there food and drink, just like it was written before. Great. Now, all we have to do is uh, reanimate the different areas. Like, for instance, dog park. No, nope, that's not happening. Roller skating. Nope, that's not food and drink. So we're going to bring those down and bring the opacity of them down. Let's make room. This will be fun. Let's move coffee over the left and get some serious animation. Ice cream up to the top. That counts. Um, swimming. No yoga, reading. None of that is food and drink. So why don't we just bring those up and then bring the opacity down. Now, what's really cool is Adobe XD remembers the name and type of layer, right? So with that name and type of layer, that's how it's doing all that magic work and moving and zipping things around, which is really, really fun. So let's do this one more time. Let's go back to our prototype tab, come in here to food and drink. We want the entire tag, not just the text there. Let's bring that over to food and drink again. It saves all of our prototype selections, okay? And then we want to do that for our second artboard as well. Let's go food and drink, love it. Uh, and then let's prototype our way back. So from here, we have outdoor save, but we want to also prototype back to all. With that being done, we should be able to press play and jump around from outdoor, food and drink, and any combination of these will work. And remember, as I scroll around, right, these are going to work no matter what. Like, let's go back to all, for instance. I'm going to scroll way up like I was looking. Oh, that looks good. Actually, let's go to food and drink. Boom, there it is. Super fun animation. <laughs> I love it. It's so cool. It's so much fun. Oh, my gosh. Um, okay, great. Somebody said Pablo Stanley illustrations. These are Pablo Stanley illustrations. My man Pablo, this is from his... Um, blush uh, a library that he has created with lots of really cool stuff. You can go onto the website actually uh, and, and customize all of these um, illustrations to, to the color of your project and then download all of them as SVGs, PNGs. That's exactly what I did for these. So super fun. Um, okay, that's, that's a good start, I think. Maybe we could do one more. Let's just do one more just because it's fun and I love it. Okay, so I'm gonna grab activities. Um, all and let's see what do we got what's what's some of our other ones uh, our options here sports let's do sports we got to do sports don't leave sports out when you're searching for activities okay so boom sports we did that one you know you know what we're gonna do we're gonna turn this to the default state turn this one to the active make sure that we type the word sports inside of here boom just like that easy super easy to do and then we're going to select anything that is a sport it's, uh, let's get to, i need an opinion from the crowd out there is dog parks uh, or dog parks a sport they're a sport for your dog i suppose we can count that as a sport let's do it uh ice cream and coffee are not so let's take that down let's move dog parks over this way that'll be fun and roller skating can come up i definitely think swimming and dancing are sports great and bring that one up in our masonry grid kind of 20 pixels away from each one reading is not a sport so let's bring it down and then yoga that one is a sport beautiful okay and then uh that works great okay so let's go back and just prototype this last one because everything's just working so good okay uh now what you could do what you could do is after you've created a prototype to multiple, if I just took this top that now has like multiple prototype links in it, I could just copy that top over and the prototyping is going to follow with it. It's going to follow along. Um, so that's something you can do as well. Um, okay, so let me see. Outdoors is going back to where it should. Uh, all And you can see it absolutely has. This is a great example. Because I pulled, uh, duplicated the original artboard, it's bringing some of those as well. So the only one it's not bringing with it is the artboard that it previously used to be, right? So let's go back to all. Boom. Now we should be all linked up uh, except for, oh man, almost forgot. Let's lead sports over to sports on each of these, okay? Just like that. Okay, perfect. We're going to prototype. See how it looks. Outdoors, food and drink, scroll over, sports. All that looks great. Boom, just like that. Scroll over, back to all. I love it. Simple, easy animation. Really, really fun. A great experience for 
uh, just, just for the little bit of work that we put into it. So I can't wait to see your version of this. Uh, make sure that when you're done with your work that you post it um, on your Behance account. You can um, uh, use the hashtag XDDailyChallenge so we can find it or you can post it inside of the Discord server and be able to look at those tomorrow. All the information Sam Peterson posted in the chat and you can find the information here at Behance.net slash challenge slash XD. Man, that was a lot of fun. Stay tuned. We got a lot of really cool content uh, here on Behance, here on Adobe Live. I'll see you right back here, same time tomorrow, same place, same time, same same stuff, same guy, same host. Um, and I, I will be reviewing your work tomorrow as well. And so again, check the chat for all of those. Thanks for joining me today. Make sure that you join me again tomorrow. Have a fantastic day, morning, evening, wherever you're at. Hope to see you tomorrow. Take care.